I'm sure most of you by now know my story. And yet, I can't help but thinking about it every week when I speak and whenever I have a chance and opportunity to share it with people. And I think it makes sense to you today. When my mother, who's an alcoholic, left me on a street corner, she walked away, she didn't come back. So I'm sitting on the street corner for three days, no food, no water. Hundreds of people drove by, hundreds of people walked by. It was a long time ago, folks, a long time ago. And in those three days when I was sitting on that corner, you know, anybody, anybody could have picked me up. Could have been a drug dealer, a gang member, a pedophile. It was in 1960. The United States was a different time then. But then, finally, on that third afternoon, one person stopped. How does this happen? Think about this for a minute. One person pulls his car over to the side of the road, gets out, walks over to where I'd been sitting for those three days, puts his hand on my shoulder and just says, are you okay? Are you okay? And I used to stutter just horribly when I was a child. And I tried to explain to him, my mother was gone, I'm hungry. And immediately, just like that, he, he didn't have to go to a conference. He didn't have to read a book on evangelism. That one moment in time, please don't miss this, this one moment right there on a street corner in 1960, where a little 12-year-old boy had been sitting, scared, lonely, hungry, and one ordinary man, oh, wait a minute, who? Who was the ordinary man? Yeah. He was a Christian, an ordinary Christian. In fact, he was leaving work, going to the hospital to visit his dying son, and in the middle of his personal issues, all the struggles that his family was going through, he still chose to stop and say, are you okay? And when he heard me say I was hungry, he went over, got me a burger, got me a Coke, I'm sitting on the street corner. Hmm. He got on the telephone. And who did he call? He made some calls, and within five hours, five hours of this meeting, this defining moment meeting is what I like to call it. Five hours after this meeting, he's loading me into a church van and sponsors me to go to a Sunday school camp. This is all happening in five hours, folks. He doesn't know me. We. Uh, but there's a lot we could say right this moment and you know that a lot I could say but something happened that afternoon on a street corner because out of his own need he still cared he sends me to the camp I've never been to church in my life so now I'm in this Sunday school camp and for the first time in my life, I heard the story of Jesus. First time. And, and something happened. I came to the front. I tried to pray, but I'd never prayed. I didn't know how. But I heard the speaker saying in the microphone to all the kids that came to the front, just say, just, just, just talk to Jesus. And I thought, okay. And I did. I tried. But I remember what I said. I said, Jesus, my mother doesn't want me. I said, there's nobody around to take care of me. I said, but if you love me, I'll give my life to you. That was it, folks. In this old wood frame chapel 
in this Sunday school camp out in the middle of the woods. One little boy heard the story of Jesus. Why? Because one man chose to stop through his own struggles and he made up his mind to sponsor me to go to this Sunday school camp. It was $17.50 back in 1960. He, I found out, I found out later, he had to borrow the $17.50. He borrowed $17.50 to sponsor me, put me on a van, send me to the camp. So at one time, one time, I heard the story of Jesus and my life was turned. We can come up with all kinds of terms, a new trajectory, a new direction, and call it what you want. But because one man made a choice to stop, got me some food, borrowed $17.50 because he didn't have it because his own son was dying and yet he put all the pieces of the puzzle together right up to the moment when I got in that van and they took me to that camp but then the moment of my decision to give my life for Christ was then put into motion and now, here we are, and here we are. If you ever wondered if one ordinary person can make a difference, I hope that just my testimony, my life story, what I've tried to share with you, if I could just tell you one thing, it would be this. One person still has the ability to make a difference in a child that was exactly like me. In India, our Metro Sunday School, doing more and more for the kids in India, for the Metro Sunday School now that's moving rapidly all across the continent of Africa. In the Philippines, which place would you like to talk about? And how did all of this worldwide vision and reaching kids that nobody wanted all of these places if from Ukraine to Africa to South America how did it happen it all started my friends it all started with an ordinary Christian who didn't have much he borrowed $17 and 50 cents and made it possible for me to hear the story of Jesus for the first time. And the story has continued around the world for all these years. I hope some of you understand that as ordinary people, we still have that ability to do something extraordinary in the life of a boy, a girl, just like me. I hope, I pray, I prayed, I prayed. Just like I prayed that night at the camp that the man sponsored me to go to. I pray that some of you will say, I can't change a country, I get that. I'm not asking you to change a country. I'm not asking you to change a city. What I'm asking you is,